Hey everyone, welcome to another video in this series about creating a chat app in Flutter the right way. In this video, we'll be looking at creating our receipt service so that we can send and receive message receipts. Now, if it is your first time here, please consider subscribing to the channel as we offer guides as how to go about creating software using Flutter the right way. Uh, using various software design principles and overall clean architecture and remember guys to like the video to share so that we can grow the channel all right so let's get into it so we want to go inside of our lab source models folder and we're going to create our receipt model so let's just go ahead and create our receipt model. And for our receipt, there are certain properties that we will want. So for example, we will want our recipient, which is the user for that receipt, to whom that receipt will be sent. We want also the message ID for that receipt. And we want a receipt status and I'll create a enum for this. I'm just gonna call it receipt status. We want our time date timestamp and always our id which our database will generate automatically for us string id and we're just gonna get use a getter so that we can access that ID from the object. So there we have our basic properties that we'll be using for receipt class. Let us now go ahead and create that enum. So for our enum, which I'll call receipt status, I'm just gonna store three state sent, delivered, and read. And I'm also gonna create some extension methods on our enum, and I'm gonna call it enum parsing to make it easy to parse the, your enum value to string and from string back to enum. And I'm using the new extent Dart extension methods. So I'm just gonna say create that extension on my receipt status enum. And I'm gonna add two methods here. I'm gonna add a value method, and this will return the value of the particular enum that I'll reference. So I'm just gonna say this, and this will reference reference the, the receipt status or the enum. And I'm just gonna say to string, and I'm gonna split that enum using the period and give me the last uh, element of that array. So if you are familiar with how enum works, Whenever you to string the enum, for example, the result would be a receipt status, say sent. So this would, if, if I have my receipt enum set to send and I call it to string method, then it will return all of this. But I want just the sent portion, and that is why I split the enum and get the last part only. 
so now I can get access to the value of the particular enum, the value that I am using. Also, I'm going to create a static method that returns a receipt status. And I'm just going to call this method from string. And you can already guess that I'm just going to pass in the string value for the particular enum that I want. And it will return an instance, not an instance, but it will return that value, the receipt status value from my list of enums. So here I'll just say return receipt status get the list of values and I'm just gonna iterate through that using the first where and I'm just gonna say first where element value is equal to the, the value that I enter so here I can say okay give me the enum representation for cent so I'll pass in sent here and it will return, for example, it will return receipt status dot sent, which would be then the proper value based on the enum type here, since this cannot be set to string. So now we have our extension set up. Now we go back to our class here and create our constructor. So my receipt constructor. And I'm just gonna pass in all these values. So I'm just gonna say this recipient message ID timestamp so those are all the required fields for my enum and again I'm just going to create those helper methods from to convert it easily from JSON and to JSON. So for my to JSON method, I'll just see, and this will return JSON object recipient So here is my JSON object, and this basically will be stored in our database. So we have the recipient, the message ID, the status, given the value. Now we are calling our extension method here value to return just the, the enum value type here and strip away the name of the enum itself. So we have all these fields for our receipt that will store to the database. And I'm just gonna make the return type explicit, which is of map string dynamic. So that's the return type. And then we'll go ahead and create our factory method here, which is our receipt from JSON. And this will create a receipt object from the JSON object that we'll receive from the database. So dynamic JSON. And again, this is very similar to what we have done before with the message uh, factory. So here we have created our receipt object from our JSON object. And basically just getting all the values from our JSON object and assigning them to the appropriate receipt property or attribute. 
And as you can see here with our status, we are using our enum parsing, that static from string method to parse our status into the appropriate enum type and our timestamp. And of course, as you can see, I've gone ahead and also changed the parameters in the constructor to be named parameters with the required attribute so that our code will be more readable. So this is our receipt model that we will be using in our receipt service. So we can go ahead and under services, create a new folder. And there we will create our receipt service, which is our receipt service contract. We'll go ahead and we'll say abstract class I receipt service. And you might be wondering why do I create so many abstract classes? And this is to keep my application decoupled from actual implementation detail. So each of the services are actual low level implementation detail that is specific to the particular database that I might be using. So I want to keep my application decoupled from that. So if I choose at any point to change my data layer, I can change it without much change required in, a, in the application, where I can say, for example, if I change this from RethinkDB to say Firebase, all I need to do is to create an implementation of that Firebase service that implements my iReceipt service. And then further in the application, I all I have to do is to switch out that what I have now, my receipt service, which is of course RethinkDB to that Firebase service. And it's basically just plug and play, very simple, very easy to modify, and very easy to extend your application without the need for uh, much change. And so in a sense, we are following the open close principle of the solid principles where our application is open to extension, but close for modification. So here we have our iReceipt service with just two methods to send a receipt. And again, our stream, which is pretty, less, pretty similar to our message service, so that we can subscribe here to receive receipts. So now if we should go ahead and our receipt service, implementation impl class receipt service implements the i receipt service and you can literally go ahead and just copy the message service and change it out one by one and that's exactly what we're going to do so I'm just gonna go into my message service. I'm gonna copy all these, except for the remove part, copy that. And I'm gonna paste it here. So now, all I need to do, import the appropriate libraries or do not need encryption for the receipt. Stream controller instead of message, this will be receipt. We have our subscription here. This should be receipt service instead. No encryption. 
we want our dispose method right instead of messages this will be receipts and this accepts a user which is not a named parameter so we have our user and this will return a receipt so we can literally change this method to say start receiving receipts and for our let's pass in the user here for our send we send a receipt instead of message I'm just gonna change wherever I see message to receipt then I am just gonna remove this since there's no encryption and I'm just gonna insert the data and that's it we send our receipt for our start receiving receipts we need to go to the receipts table we filter by the user which is here we need to be recipient recipient so we filter by the recipient of the receipt which will be us so we are filtering we want only those receipts that are sent to us we change these messages again to receipt We have our receipt, receipt from feed. We do not need to remove anything. And we change this method here to be receipt from feed, return a receipt. And we don't need all of this. Remove this. We literally return receipt from JSON. And that is our receipt service. Pretty straightforward, pretty similar to our message service. And all our subscription services will have a similar setup. For example, our typing notification service. So that we can update the user when the user is typing so it's very similar to our message service so we can go ahead now and try and test this to ensure that it is working as it should and first thing in our side of our helpers go ahead and copy this change from message to receipts go ahead and copy this also change from messages to receipts so there we update our helper now we can go ahead inside of our tests and add that test class in this case it will be receipt service test I 
test is pretty similar to the others also. We'll have our rethink db instance here. We'll have our connection and our receipt service, which is our system under test. Go ahead inside of our setup method. And we will configure those dependencies. So our connection connect. We can literally use just connect because it by default, if you look by default, the database it's test host is local host and the port is the appropriate port. So we can just use connect without adding the connection info. So I'm just going to say await and I'm going to call the create db from the helper method with my connection and my rethink instance then instantiate my receipt service passing in the rethink instance and the connection. So now I'll also set up my teardown method, or teardown hook or block. And I'm just gonna dispose, call the dispose method of my receipt service and then call the cleanup db or clean db. and pass in R and the connection. So now for our test, I am just going to create a user, final user equal user from, from JSON. Pass in the JSON object. Then I say the user ID is before. This user is active. True. Last scene. So there is my user and then for my tests, I can go ahead and write my tests. So the first test is of course to ensure that the receipts are sent successfully. So I've just gone ahead and create a receipt here, message ID, status, say that this receipt was delivered and then send the receipt. So I'm expecting that it should return true to say that this record was inserted into the database. So as you can see here, we are getting some errors. Could not connect to local host, error connection refused, dispose call and null. And the thing is I have not started my Docker container and that is very important that when we just start, if we had stopped our rethink instance, if I say Docker container ls, then you can see that there are no running instance. But for my container, and that's the name, I can go ahead and say start. That should start the container. 
And if I go ls again, I should see the running container, which is great. So now if I should go back here, again to my test and run my test, then you can see that my receipt was successfully sent. And for my tech second test, it's just to ensure that we are subscribing to and receiving receipts successfully. So here I've gone ahead and created the second test, which is to successfully subscribe and receive receipts. And it's very similar to our messages uh, subscription test, where we basically subscribe here, listen with the user, and we use this expect async method to determine the count, the number of times the, we receive a receipt from the subscription. And here we are checking that the recipient of the subscription is the user that we have created here. The, re the recipient of the receipt rather is the user that we have created. So we've gone ahead, created two receipts and the recipient in both cases, or in both receipts are the same user and we we send both receipts so we are expecting that we should receive two receipts here which is suggested by the call count so this method will be called twice and twice the recipient will be the same user so if we go ahead and run that we can see that it is working we are successfully subscribing and receiving those receipts and that is wonderful so we have created our receipt service and we have successfully tested our receipt service i'm just going to go ahead close all these windows inside my git i'm just going to say add receipt service And now I'm gonna look at creating or typing notification service, which is very similar to what we have done so far. So inside of our models folder, I am going to create a model that represents our typing event. typing event and for this event I'm just gonna say send this typing event from one user to another user and the particular event that I am sending sending which I'm just gonna call typing, which will be represented by an enum. Again, I'm gonna get the ID and this so that it can be, in this case, the ID is so that we can reference this event and remove it from the database as soon as possible. But this model really doesn't need an ID but for the cleaning up of this event from the database, we are going to store the ID. So for my typing event, I'm just gonna say at required from this to this event so 
So now for my, let me go ahead, use the getter again for the ID. So now for my type in enum, it's pretty similar to my receipt. So I'm just gonna create an enum call type in, and then I'm gonna say start stop. So type in start, type in stop. And for those two enums, I'm gonna do something very similar to what I did for my receipt, which is to create those two extension methods for parsing the enum. So again, here are the two extension methods. Type in parser on type in. Again, this very same thing, split and from string. And I am sure there's a better way this can be done to, so that it, the class or the methods are pretty dry so that we do not have to be keep on doing the same thing over and over but I'm just gonna leave that for you guys to figure out. And again, for my typing event, I'm just gonna create those two methods, the toJSON method and the fromJSON factor method, which has been the same thing we've been doing that you guys should be pretty much accustomed to know. So I'm just gonna do those two methods quickly. So here, there we have our two methods, our toJSON, and our from JSON, which has the from to and the event, the typing event. And from, from JSON, we create a new typing event from the based on the JSON returned from the database. So that's pretty much our typing event model along with those typing enums. So now we can go inside of our services and I'm just gonna create a folder called the typing and we can create our typing service. In this is the case, I'm just gonna say typing, I'm just gonna call it typing notification service contract. IP notification. Just gonna create very similar things to future to our receipt service. Send, and in this case, I'm gonna send a event, and this event is a typing event and again stream typing event I'm gonna say subscribe And here I'm gonna pass in the user, that is the user or the person who is subscribing to this um, event to receive typing events. And I'm just I'm gonna pass in a list of user IDs. And this you these user IDs will represent those persons whom I want to receive events from. So it's gonna filter out even further so that I am not subscribing to receiving events, typing events from every typing event that hits the database, but typing events only from persons with whom I already have a 
chat thread going on with. So that's another layoffs of, of filter that kind of makes it makes it more efficient or speed up the the whole typing event pr process so now we can go ahead and create that so typing typing i'm just going to call it typing notification and again this is very similar to our receipt serve type in notification this implements a type in notification go ahead create those two overrides now for our dependencies Connection, connection, and our rethink DB instance. We want also our stream controller. Stream controller of type typing. Event and this will be a broadcast stream. We want our stream subscription for our change feed. And inside of our constructor go ahead and get our connection and our rethink instance now inside of our send event I am inside of our send event here. It's going to make these required. I'm also going to ask for the user to which this event is sent. And the reason why I'm asking for that is I want to check first if that user is active so two if that user is not currently active then I do not want to send that event any at all that's waste right there so I'm just gonna return false otherwise I can go ahead and send the event by inserting it into the typing events database. So here we insert our record into the typing events collection or table using the JSON object from our event. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make this rethink instance private also. So there we have our insert method we also need at all times once we have stream involved to dispose of those stream control and cancel whatever subscription we have when we close our application we're just gonna create that and change feed just gonna say cancel that use that optional operate on also for the controller 
I am just going to close that. So now for our subscribe event, it's pretty similar to what we've been doing. So I'm just going to write the code and then explain as usual. So I've gone ahead and write the rest of the code um, since this is very similar to what I've been doing so far. And here we have users. ID. I'm just going to change that to user ID. And inside my contract also user IDs. So what we have done is that we have created this start typing events method, which basically, as we have done before, connects to the typing events um, collection, subscribe to it for changes. And here we filter, we filter by event. So we filter and we return where events two is equal to the user which should receive those events and also where user IDs that we pass in contains event from. So this might seem a bit complicated, but it's really not. Um, we are basically using some rethink DB expressions to really filter what, what we are doing. And what we are really saying is that all I want to get or to receive events for is for those events that are sent to me and they are coming from the list of user IDs that I send here. So in other words, they are coming from my current active chats or threads that I have. So if I do not have a current active chat, then I shouldn't be receiving any typing events since there's no chat with that particular person to receive typing events. And then again, we have a changes, we are a stream and we listen for those events and we loop through those events, check if the data is null, then we return if the data is not null, then we pass the data to this event from feed to create our typing event object from the JSON data. And then we add that to our controller. So it will be returned to the clients that have subscribed to this if, to receive these events. And then after I send that event to the clients who have subscribed, I remove that event from the database I'm using this method, remove events. So I pass in the event and I use rethink, connects to the typing events table, get the event based on the ID and delete that event, setting the return changes to false so that rethink does not return um, the deletion as so as a, a change here so it's it's very straightforward and similar to what we have been doing so far so we can go ahead and quickly write tests for this or typing uh, events or typing notification so we'll go ahead here and we'll say Typing notification tests. Our usual setup again. Rethink. With our connection. And also our typing notification as our system under test. Go ahead with our setup method. Uh, 
and we will connect so connection R connect then we create our database objects with said connection and instantiate our typing notification with those objects so now we have that we can set up our teardown also to just clean up after us so for our teardown we call our dispose on our SCT and we clean up our DB so now I'm just gonna go ahead and create two users now my two users and then for my first test I want to ensure that it sent typing notification successfully So I'm just gonna go ahead and create that this test. So here for this test, I am creating a typing event and I'm saying that the event is from user two to user one and the event is typing start. So I'm sending that event to user one and I'm expecting true so if I go ahead should go ahead and run this test as you can see our test is passing we are successfully sending our typing notification and so for our next test I'm just gonna write a, another test that is very similar to what I've been doing so far to test that we are subscribing and receiving these events so here we have our second test which is to subscribe to receive these events using this listen command listen method callback and passing our expect async method with our expectation here which is that we'll receive the event from user with this id and it should be called twice since we are sending typing event twice so we are creating a start typing event and a stop typing event and we are sending both events so the expectation is that the user will receive both events so if we go ahead and run this test just to see what is happening here then we can see that we successfully subscribe and are receiving those events so that is wonderful we have created our typing notification and everything is working as it should so again in this video we have done two things we have created our receipt service and we have created our type in notification which is great so i'm just gonna stop here for this video pushing the code to github and to thank you guys for tuning into this series i truly hope that you are enjoying it thus far and if you are enjoying it do not um, forget to like to share and to subscribe um, so that we can grow this channel and help each other grow as Flutter developers.
because the industry is growing and we need robust Flutter developers that can create production ready applications. So thank you guys for tuning in and see you in the next